Our final presenter today is Paul Merskoff, founder and CEO of HireKeep from the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, where they've developed a platform to help match qualified candidates with hiring managers. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Again, my name is Paul. I am the founder and CEO of HireKeep. We are a platform that matches hiring managers with candidates based on relationship data. Hiring and recruiting is easy, said no one ever, okay? It's very, very hard. And as a hiring manager myself for many, many years and building big teams, I've realized that when I wanted to build a team and hire people, I found myself doing this. Resume, resume, resume. Oh, but well, that one looks good. Okay, I'll try that. Resume, resume. And every single day I woke up, I was bombarded in my inbox with thousands of potential candidates. So I'm missing talent, obviously, right? But I'm also maybe picking the wrong people to bring in an interview. And after hundreds and hundreds of interviews, I realized that I couldn't really develop a relationship with the people that I was looking to interview over a short three-hour process where I have a phone call with them, I bring them in, we have a quick conversation, and then I have to make a decision that could last years to come for the candidate and for myself as a hiring manager. And when you're tasked with hiring 25 people in a period of just a few months, you've got to rely on something that goes beyond just the resume. You've got to rely on something that goes beyond the job posting even. And so with recruiting, it's very difficult because the the landscape has really stayed the same. It's been stagnant. As a hiring manager, what do I do? I need to hire, so I go online and I put my job listing out there. The same sites that have been around for years doing nothing new. And we know the names. Not sure if I can say them on TV, but I won't. And as a candidate, what do I do? I go on those same sites and I click apply, and I click apply, and I click apply. And what does that lead to? How do you really match people up? How do you create the harmony, the marriage, you really can't. And so as I hired all these people, and I loved everyone that I hired, I realized that for some candidates, it may have not been a culture fit. Maybe they didn't like me, and I'm a great guy. Maybe I didn't realize, you know, I didn't think that they were the greatest fit after, you know, three to six to nine months. Who knows? But the idea is that unless we go beyond the resume and figure out how we can build a relationship before we start working together, we really don't know how that experience is going to be. And here's the challenge. The challenge and the problem is that recruiting is extremely expensive and it's extremely time consuming, especially for a hiring manager at a growing startup, which many companies are. And when you have a company that's growing, you can't afford to bring in a recruiting team. And when you go external and you hire an external recruiter, what do you get? You get someone else making a decision for you about who you should hire based on some criteria. So as I searched and searched and searched for a solution, I really couldn't find one. And I started to develop a questionnaire through my vast network of VPs of sales and, and other hiring managers that were looking for specific things that were relationship oriented, vision oriented, value oriented, measure oriented, method oriented. What I mean by all these things is I'm looking on the inside of a person who they are at the core, how they do business day to day, how do they measure success, what are the things they value, because those are the core beliefs that don't change. And I believe, and we believe at HireKeep, that if you can match those beliefs to the person you work for, you're going to love your job. And if that hiring manager brings you in on that same premise, well, guess what? You're going to have an amazing working relationship. Now, I'm not saying that the resume is push to the side. It's still very important. You need to be qualified for the position you work for. But it shouldn't be the only deciding factor when we're looking at who to hire, when to hire, how to hire, right? So as I developed this system in my last position, I realized that as I was creating these matches with the people I was hiring, they were sticking. They were staying. The culture was there. They loved their job. And I said, oh my God, I have something here. This is really interesting. I'm looking at a resume, but I'm looking at something more. And what's even more interesting past that point is that the people that worked together worked more cohesively, they ramped up faster, there was more of a unity between the teams. It was almost like a blended relationship that occurred. And so I took that model and I ran with it. And that's when HireKeep was born. And so now 
we actually collect data from these assessments that a candidate takes and a hiring manager takes along with some of the members of their team at a company. And we analyze and match them using a match score. Once we've established the match score, we send that candidate pool of matched candidates over to the hiring manager, and they can choose which candidate to engage based on their resume and that match score. So when you think about matching, what are you really thinking about? Well, if you value one thing, or you measure metrics a certain way, especially for revenue generating teams, it's very important that the person you work with measures those things the same way. If you're a dial-oriented person, or if you're a talk time-oriented person, whatever may be important to you as a hiring manager has to be as important to the person that works with you or for you. Otherwise, there's a mismatch, and eventually, over a period of time, we believe that's gonna, that butt, headbutting is going to cause that person to look for other opportunities. Right? So the idea behind HireKeep is not only to collect this data, not only to improve the assessment, really, but it's to help companies hire better over time faster over time, make it easier and more cost effective for them to hire over time. Because in our professional career, right, we're either someone looking for an opportunity or we're someone offering an opportunity. right? And so we need to help align both of those and make it simpler for us to determine who to work for and who to work with. If you don't wake up in the morning and you say, I love my job, then there's something wrong. If you don't wake up in the morning and say, I love my boss, there's something wrong. We should all be waking up as passionate to work as we are working for our best friend. Now look, I'm saying, not saying your boss is going to be your best friend, but relationships are everything in business. You know? And you buy from people you like, and you work with people you like. And we want to create a time machine that allows us to see into the future. And I know that's crazy to think, but imagine if we collect enough data, enough retention data, from the assessments that are done for a specific company, we can save them millions upon millions of dollars because, I don't know if you know this, but the cost of churn, meaning people leaving other companies, are 20% to upwards of 150% of that person's annual salary. So if someone's making $50,000 a year and you lose five people a year, well, that's $250,000 in lost revenue that company's seeing. How do we close that gap? How do we create the time machine that says, hey, you know what, you and I, we're going to be best friends six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. How do we turn a job into a career? You know, I've never heard someone say, you know, I really don't like my job without them saying, I really don't like my boss. And, and that's what we believe to be the truth or the people that we work with. So we're really trying to target that market where any company hiring in, and we're a niche, so we work with sales, business development, account management, customer success, any really relationship-oriented uh, divisions of a company where we believe our assessment can really matter, right? And as we're building this and as we're testing it with these teams, companies are jumping on this opportunity. So far within our business, we've signed four companies that have a multi-million dollar valuation, some tens of millions of dollars in valuation, and we're helping them through our manual internal matching technology bring on sales talent, bring on business development talent, and everyone that we've brought in so far has been sticking, has been a cultural fit, has been a behavioral fit, has been a, a measures and metrics fit for that hiring manager because the decisions are made on the person's internal beliefs and values. So our goal is to revolutionize recruiting. It is, because recruiting hasn't changed. It really hasn't, and it's still expensive and time-consuming and honestly very unpredictable because you can't really track, and companies have a really tough time tracking this information and tracking this data. So if we can help a company hire better people, if we can help candidates stop mindlessly applying for jobs, because I've had calls where it says, hey, why'd you apply for this company? Wait, what is this company again? That's the kind of stuff you get when you're not creating any value for the candidate to really put in the time and effort to be matched with the right company. It just becomes automation. But automation is useless if you don't build relationships, right? And it's also useless if you don't collect and improve on that. So join me, join HireKeep in revolutionizing recruiting, creating better relationships between hiring managers and their teams and companies with the candidates that they bring in and on a mission to help companies grow the right way and turn a job 
into a career where you wake up in the morning and you say, I love my job. Thank you. Great. That uh, was a fantastic presentation. What is your strategy to implement the, the things that you said and the things that you believe so that uh, from the, what you've told me, I would love that if I was hiring someone. <laughs> so how, how are you going to implement that? Absolutely. So right now we have a bare bones product. It's completely internal. It's not client facing. What we do is I, would, I can send you an assessment tomorrow if you'd like. You can take that assessment. And then what we do is we, using social media and other manual recruiting sources, we actually attract candidates to our technology and we say, hey, we can match you with the perfect job. And they take our assessments as well. Based on your needs, we would send you a matched candidate pool and you would then select a candidate that you'd like to interview, engage, and ultimately maybe hire. That's how we're actually working with other organizations. We have revenue. We're profitable. We're growing 100% month over month. And what we're looking for is to bring our platform to the forefront so we don't have to engage each individual company one by one. I want to give this company, I want to give this platform the opportunity to engage with all of these other companies and hiring managers that need a pool of candidates that they can really relate to and, 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 and connect with. Great. Thank Paul, I, th I think your, uh, the business model is, is great. I think it's, um, and you'll definitely be successful at that. Uh, my question to you is what space does HireKeep occupy in terms of um, your clients that you're looking for? Is it an IT type based um, company or, or what exactly what is it? A great question. So right now we're in the realm of uh, revenue and customer retention teams. So our platform right now focuses on sales, business development, account management, customer success, because based on my experience of, you know, what, 15 years in sales and my network and my advisors, everyone is sales, biz dev, and all that oriented. So uh, our idea is let's test it in a niche where, that we understand. Let's ev evolve our technology. Let's evolve, evolve our algorithm. Let's make it better. Let's prove that, you know, let's put, put our money where our mouth is. Can this actually increase retention and eliminate the hassle of hiring and recruiting top talent, and then we can scale it to IT. We can scale it to anything. The idea is, if you're in IT, you're not IT. Who you are in here is not IT, right? So let's create those core matches first before we start looking at the, uh, the technical elements. Uh, so uh, uh, moving forward with your vision, uh, I imagine you intend to compete against large platforms like CareerBuilder, uh, or platforms like that. How are you going to uh, get a community of people excited about something like this that, that has a little bit more of an involved uh, process than something as simple as posting your resume? Sure. Um, let me give you a stat real quick. So far, we've asked about 150 people that we've manually connected with to take the assessment. 150 people have taken this assessment. The engagement is there. We don't have a customer-facing platform that people can go on. Cool. Career Thank you. Sorry. Thank Time you for the question. Is up. Thank you so much Thank for, you. for presenting your vision on the Pitch Perfect Show. Thank and you. again, please share the link with your network because the highest scorer wins the Pitch Purse. And audience, I again remind you, you too can log your opinion by following the Pitch Perfect link on our website at ibossinc.com to help your favorite pitcher win the pitch purse which will be unveiled at the end of this show okay so we now heard from our three presenters on the other side of the following sponsor messages we will share our thoughts on the presentations then unveil what's in today's pitch purse so stay tuned hello my name is Shirley Liu I'm the Executive Field Chairman with First Financial Security. We are the proud sponsor of the iBoss Pitch Perfect Shows. The reason we're here today is that I like to inform and educate and empower folks and individuals out there when it comes to their retirement. Now, the kind of things I'm about to talk to you, it has to do with index product, the kind of too good to be true that you may have not heard of. Well, for example, what are some of the things you may have when it comes to, to your retirement? Well, do you have a 401k, IRA, TSP? Those are basically retirement plans that you all currently have. Now, when you think of retirement plans, your plans in the future is to hopefully that account will grow. 
that you never lose a dime. Well, what if the market goes down? Could you lose money? The second question I want to ask you is this, does that particular account have guaranteed lifetime income? Well, how about this? The third piece of it is, does that account happen to double up your income, pay out when you get sick or in, into a long-term care situation? If it does not have it, why doesn't it? Maybe isn't it time that you do a financial checkup for you and your family, find out where you are at with those financial plannings? Because it's your money, you saved, you, it's hard earned, and you want to make sure that it has. In addition to retirement, some of the things you may want to consider. Well, some of the protection, do I have lifetime income as well on that? And does it pay out for my family? If you need to get in touch with me, you can always get in touch with me on ShirleyLouFinance.com. And my can be reached number is 703-608-1203. We will give you a free consultation analysis so that you can be better informed and empower what you need to do in regards to your financial future. Thank you. Thank you presenters for sharing your visions and consider the following as you continue to hone your pitching skills. Every business strives for exposure from seasoned businesses with significant revenue to startup founders seeking their first customer. The big difference is a startup has to find its voice and an audience to hear it. Today, there is a proliferation of events designed to help young entrepreneurs be heard. Shows like Shark Tank have fueled increased attention early stage company founders are enjoying. Though, let's not overlook shows for big business like Undercover Boss. The sheer exposure experience from landing a spot on a shark tank can be instrumental for businesses whether you get a deal with a shark or not. Consider that strategy with your local pitch events, whether they're closed, live streamed, or televised. Winnings go to a limited few, but the audience of potential takers could be limitless. So focus on how you will get your message to that listener for which your product or service will resonate. In the limited time you have, be concise and touch on at minimum the following. What is your product or service? What problems does it solve and for whom? How will you deliver it to the end user? What kind of team have you amassed? What's your vision for the company's growth to include a financial summary? Why are you pitching, or stated differently, what are you looking for? And for the taker, you must answer for them, what's in it for me? With these points in mind, you then just practice, practice, and practice. Terrence's presentation was engaging and passionate. He's a good example of an early stage founder trying to find his voice. The difficulty oftentimes when launching a product versus building a business is how to paint a picture of the company while focusing on the product. Conveying whether this is a one-shot deal or are there more products to come? So the challenge for Terrence is to build into his pitch a vision of the company behind the product. There's no doubt Julie has mastered the art of communicating the story of color and soul. She had a panel of all male judges fully engaged in cosmetics. We clearly understood the product, market, and who is being served, however, the pitch was void of information regarding the team and the company behind the product. Time could have been a factor and a reminder to practice for your allotted time. Ensuring your pitch addresses all key components that need to be conveyed. Paul's experience and passion shine through. He did a good job painting a picture of the significant void in the job search industry. He was clear and concise, 
as he weaved the story behind developing Higher Keep and helping listeners understand its stages of operations. However, I was left wondering about the team and company behind the service, so I recommend some time be spent introducing the audience to the wizards behind the technology. But that was a great job, guys. In closing, please follow the link for Pitch Perfect on our website at ibossinc.com and let these pitchers know what you thought about their presentations. All surveys completed within 14 days of the show's initial airing on YouTube are counted and you can receive airing notifications by subscribing to the iBoss YouTube channel or our New Capital Markets newsletter. This episode's Pitch Purse contains a three-hour training session on building an investor database from iBoss, a press release with supported marketing from Blue Artists, one-hour legal service consultation from the Legis Group, a strategic IT planning session and follow-up from Maine Spring, a 30-minute interview on public access cable from Sage Solutions, a three-hour executive management workshop from Ace Gnosis, and a four-hour consulting session from Clinton Jones and Associates, all valued at $5,000. Thanks to Jack Wilson of Liquid Capital of Greater Philadelphia for sponsoring a startup company founder. And my special thanks to each presenter, judge, and pitch purse contributor. We additionally would like to thank Shirley Liu of First Financial Services for whom this show was made possible. So until next time, keep practicing so you too can Pitch perfect.